cat that I've already made. For this cat, I used, kind of like in my last tutorial, a boning inside of the cat with wire and um, tin foil. But I tried a wire and tin foil kind of skeleton for the cat posture that I want to do for this video, and it turned out really horrible. So <laughs> I'm going to just start with clay, and I'm going to use wire as needed. So basically all you're going to need for this project is your creative paper clay or any other kind of um, air dry clay that you want to use, maybe some 16 gauge wire, some water, and then nice pretty accessories. Um, so I'm just going to get this clay a little wet and I'm going to get to work on this cat. So just like last time, you're going to use water in your fingers to smooth out the clay. Whenever that is necessary. So this I'm imagining as his belly. And I'm not trying to make a realistic cat. I'm trying to make a kind of cartoonish looking cat. So I'm not so concerned with um, correct proportions and things of that nature. I just want you to be able to look at it and say, oh, well, that's a cat. Right now this is simply an outline. I'm going to connect some arms here and some legs here. Do you think he's still too big? Okay, so I'm going to reserve that for his tail. And I'm going to attach his little leggies. I have a boy cat, which is why I'm referring to the cat as he all the time because I'm imagining my own cat as I make this. Which is totally fine. That's what I want you to do. If you know of, I mean, if you're not going to do a cat, that's totally fine. But if you're doing <clears throat> your own pet, then by all means imagine them. I think that gives your sculpture or your art really more personality when you've imagined um, the character of the thing that you're sculpting or painting or um, rendering in any sense. Okay, yeah, so it's probably a really great idea to put something under this. I'm being pretty stupid right now. <laughs> Alright, so I've also gotten a small paintbrush and then a sculpting tool. These will probably help me add a little bit more detail when the time comes. But I'm going to use this paintbrush to help me smooth out these back legs in small areas where um, my fingers just don't really fit. I really like how round he is. Obviously, I like to emphasize their bellies. I think it, they're really cute. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna kind of mark off where his foot is compared to his leg. Again, this is preference, because like on this guy, I painted his um, paws white. <clears throat> when you're adding on to clay, I like to take a sharp tool like this. You certainly don't have to have a actual sculpting tool. If you do, that's awesome. If you don't, grab something like a used up pen or something sharp and you're gonna make cross hatching where you're going to attach the object. This just helps the clay hold on better. So uh, by cross hatching I mean that you're gonna draw lines going up and down and then over those lines you're gonna draw some going side to side. So you've created this texture <clears throat> on the back of your sculpture so that this can hold on to it better. You're gonna do the same thing on the edge of your tail where you're gonna connect. And there was light. And God saw the light. I thought about adding um, the texture of hair, but I'm a wimp and I didn't want to mess up what I already had and like add all this texture and then hate it. So 
so that's why this guy looks smooth. But again, it's an interpretation of a cat. It's not a real cat. I don't have to do it exactly how a cat is. This is my interpretation. Um, and if I don't have the ability to do the texture of hair um, comfortably, then that's okay. Maybe I'll attempt it sometime. But I don't think I'm going to attempt it today. Yeah, I think that's good. This is going to be funny. So, again, I'm going to do this crosshatch design. We do this a lot in shading for drawing. But, again, this just creates a grip. And you can do it as much as you want and kind of as messy as you want. It's a good thing to have a good solid grip there. So you can do it pretty deep. And then you're going to take your finger and put some water over that crosshatch. And you're going to rest the tail on. And then I'm going to kind of mold it in to his body so that you don't necessarily see where it connects. I am going to do his face first because I might put his hands up under his face. Um, so again, I'm going to do this cross hatching like we did in the back. You can have the option here to use maybe a piece of wire. You can feed it down into your piece just to give it some stability and support and have it sticking out some so that you can attach the head to it. Um, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a bigger neck, um, and a pointier nose, and I have tried to prepare kind of a place where I believe I'm going to put ears. Um, once I put ears, I'm hoping that it's going to turn more into a cat, kind of. Um, Okay, so I know I told you I didn't add any texture to this guy, like I didn't add any fur texture, I was just going to let the watercolor kind of do the talking. But in this guy, since he's looking like an otter and not a cat, I'm going to try and do a fur texture with this pointy object. <laughs> and again, this is an interpretation of fur, not necessarily realistic kind of fur. So I'm just going to do these sections of three lines to make him look a little tousled. Let's get these ears attached. So we know that the shape of cat ears are like little triangles. So I'm going to pull off maybe a little bit more clay than I think I need. And kind of between my thumbs and my fingers. Can you see that? I'm making a triangle. Um, and it's kind of a tall triangle, right? And then I'm going to take this. You could really even take the bottom of a small paintbrush. I'm going to kind of wrap it so that it gets that um, three-dimensionality, so it kind of is more of a 3D ear than a flat ear. Um, that makes a good imprint on the inside, but there you go. And I want a pretty wide base, so I'm going to leave it pretty thick. All right. I think we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and make the other ear. So I'm going to make little cross hatching there. So then on the 
bottom of my ear. Okay, so my camera cut off last time, but I finished the ears and I put two little eyes on them and a little triangular nose. Um, and I've let this dry for a few days. And I'm still not happy <laughs> with the way he came out. He looks like a rat. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna finagle with it. I'm just gonna mess around and let you watch me try to shape him a little better.